We're here to share with you inspiring stories that bring to life all the little and big ways that people bring more love, joy, laughter, and humanness to everyday life. Our focus is the hunt for those little moments that refuel the human soul and reminds us what life is really all about. I invite you to sit back, enjoy the moments, enjoy the stories, the adventures, and the journeys. another episode of what the world needs more of i am very excited to share a very special guest we've known each other since we were small kids <laughs> and grown up through school i don't know and, if we were small <laughs> well we were both pretty tall but <laughs> <laughs> young kids yeah. um her name is juliana thank you for joining us thank you i'm very excited to to share you with the world and everyone out here and for the world to meet you and connect with you through this format um, so we're going to dive right in and start with the first question. What do you feel the world needs more of? Um, I think tenderness. I feel like, you know, I mean, I have a four month old. He's four months old today. And I'm realizing that like we're born and we need someone or we prefer for someone to hold us all the time. And we need affection and closeness and warmth and touch. And then somehow we become adults and think that you know, it's okay to get through a whole day without ever hugging someone or, you know, like having any kind of closeness. And so that's been a huge thing that I've been thinking about is just the way that we decide we're independent and therefore we don't need affection, closeness. And I, and I think also, you know, that people reserve a lot of intimacy for their relationships in their life, like, you know, with their partners and, a lot of the other stuff goes away and I don't think that it's a very good recipe for thriving. Mm. I, I really agree. I, I think I admire different places around the world and growing up in the U.S., it's different when you first experience it. Um, yeah. I think one of my favorites was like in India, boys and men will hold and, and yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll hold hands or hold pinkies while they walk and connect and they'll totally. hug and be around each other. And, and there's so much connection and affection. Um, it, it's beautiful. What a beautiful thought. I, I think that's so, so very true. Thank you. Um, and, and, and for everyone to get to know more about you, uh, the, the second question is, is what would you consider to be your wow factor? And, and you know, what makes you uniquely you? And what are some of the moments that help shape it? Um, well, I'm an immigrant. Uh, my family is originally from Brazil. And so um, I guess I've always been different in the States for that reason. When I when we were young and came here, we first um, came to Iowa. And so there were not really other Brazilians there at the time. But my dad was a graduate student. Um, and so I had to learn at a really young age to sort of like shape shift and pay a lot of attention, be super observant. I actually think I, when I met your grand grandmother she told me that I was really observant and I didn't really realize when I was younger but as an adult I'm realizing that um, I'm just a person that takes time to sort of assess a situation and what that situation will require and that's been like a survival skill and something that I've had to do um, just because you know we like then we moved to California and there were no really Brazilians in Southern California at that time and now there's tons but like we had to make our own family. We had no cousins. We had no grandparents. We had no aunts, no uncles. And so um, just really like have lived a life of making people feel close, you know, like making um, friends into family. And so that's been my thing is like often I meet people and they're like, oh, you're so warm. You're so inviting. And I'm realizing that maybe a lot of people don't do that because they don't need that outside of, you know, the home or their nuclear family. And for me, it was something that I had to do to be happy and that my family had to do to be successful here. And it's really been a gift to be able to do that. It's made like traveling the world so much easier and so much more, um, fulfilling because you're curious and you get there and you sort of realize that like you may be crossing paths with other people who don't have anyone or, you know, who have moved 
for a job or for education and are far from their families. And so you just kind of bring a warmth and curiosity to everything that you do. Hmm. I love that. And, and uh, it's powerful to have that warmth, to have that curiosity, to have that connectivity. Um, I think it changes the world around you. I think it changes the community. It builds a community because um, yeah. it takes you know random strangers and, and connects all the dots and somehow those strangers all become friends and, and family and, and they, they build together and they can trust each other. It, it, it's wild. I love that. Yeah, totally. What an adventure. Yeah, totally. It's been an adventure <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but now people think Brazilians are cool and we're everywhere and it was not the case when I was a kid. That's fascinating. I wonder, and, and, and apologize for the ignorance on this, is it a natural part of the culture or is it a learned adaptive skill or both? Um, I think both um, for sure. I mean, I often people say that about Brazilians, right? Like they're warm, they're the life of the party. They, you know, they arrive, they kiss your cheek. Like it's, it's different. It's very Latin, you know, but I think also, um, but it's not everyone. It's not in everyone, you know. Like yeah. I have family in Brazil that's more like closed off, I guess, than I am. And so I think what happens when you're an immigrant in the most ideal sense is that you take the best of every culture you encounter because you kind of go, okay, well, I'm not in Brazil anymore, so I can't just be like rolling up on people and kissing them on the cheek. Like that's not going to go over well either. But you hear some things I'd like to practice in my friendships. And so like you reference men holding hands in India and girlfriends in Brazil are a lot more affectionate with each other. And so like, it was not uncommon that with my girlfriends who were Brazilian growing up, we would like watch movies together and like lay on each other and play with each other's hair. And sometimes that happens with American girlfriends, but it's really been something that I've brought to my friendships because I think that it's very healing for us. You know, I think that's why people like, like to get massage aside from the fact that it feels good is that we need touch and we, need affection and if we think that we don't there's maybe some blockage there but yeah I think it's cultural I think I picked up a lot of it from my mom and she's like you know had only come to the states when she was already a grown-up and um and then I think that I, it's also just something I've held on to because I've seen how it can be beneficial I love that I love what you said take the best from every culture you cross paths with um I'm, I'm a huge fan of trying to do that from every human I meet uh, somewhere along the lines, I picked up the thought of every person you meet is an example and a warning. I used to say or, um, and, and it causes judgment, which is separation. Yeah. And, and I learned and where, I mean, you can sit with anyone in any situation in life. And if you look close enough, you're going to find where that human is a beautiful example of something. And it's like, Ooh, I could learn that from them. And, and if you sit long enough with any human, no matter how great they come across, you will find some area of life that they're a big ass warning. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and you go, Oh, I'm not going to take that from that person. <laughs> and, totally. And, and everyone becomes a beautiful encyclopedia of life and, and they have so much yeah. to share. It's, it's one of my favorite things is, is just meeting people and listening and, and you know, I'm, a, I'm not here to judge them. I'm here to love them and connect with them and learn from them and hopefully share with them if I can. And it, yeah. it, it, it's cool. so cool. I love that quote though. Take the best of every culture with you and, and, and where you go. That's awesome. I also like making friends in the family. Oh um, yeah. The ability to, like, I don't even know where we would be if it wasn't for that. The, the ability to, to requalify. Um, I, I heard something recently and this is interesting. We were, we were taking a course on company culture and how to, how to work on that. And it's such an interesting thought. Um, but one thing that the, the, the course lady who was teaching us shared, was the, the difference between a team and a group and, and the way she qualified it. She says, you know, a group is just a, a group of people put in the same room who all have different things they're working on and different stuff they're up to and different outcomes and objectives. And, and a team might be the same group of people who've all been, um, you know, decided to lock on to one singular outcome of doing something to, together. And they're all working together towards that one piece. And she goes, you know, if there's any sports team in the world who decided to be a group, they would never win a game because everyone would be doing their own thing in every direction. But the moment they decide to be a team, they, they have the ability to now all work together to make something happen. What was really interesting is that concept circling back in the people who are, are struggling to find their own community. Yeah. And, and a lot of times what I've seen from the outside, I love your opinion on this. Um, 
a lot of times what I've seen from the outside is is a lot of times there's people there, but more or less it's just a group. It's a bunch of people doing their own thing in different directions, and they're all busy with life and love and family and kids and business and work and health and whatever. Um, but what's interesting is the moment that group of people who are around each other say, hey, you know, let's pick an hour a week. And, and for an hour a week, it doesn't matter if it's on Skype or the phone or wherever, let's be a team at something. Like, let's pick one person. Uh, you know, they can raise their hand or we can nominate them and, and, and tell us what's the most important thing in your life right now. And, and we'll be a team for you for this hour. And, and we'll all help figure out what we can do to make it work or help or pick up the phone or do anything we can to make that work. And next week, we'll choose an hour for someone else. And if each week we're a team for that one hour, it's amazing how much will happen in the community just yeah. by everyone kind of diving in and, and being a team for that one person for that one hour once, you know, however often their turn comes up. And, and it's amazing how that, like you said, you could take friends, people who are around and make them family where all of a sudden they're all focused together and they're doing something. I, I think it could change a lot of communities. Um, oh, yeah. And I think that, I mean, I live in Los Angeles, so it's like you see everybody there's no like physical representation of that like divide greater than the car, you know, like, but we are all potentially going the same direction every day, but then we're doing it separately. And I think it's also true that if you have a team that's all working on an issue, it really plays to our different strengths and abilities, because I think what's happened by us isolating and like doing this out of survival is that everyone feels like they have to be really good at a lot of things and it's really stressful and it's really overwhelming and it's honestly not possible. And so if my biggest issue is, for example, this is something that just happened is like, oh, my car battery is dead and I need to fix it. It's not that hard, but I have a newborn and I can't really leave the house. But And I'm also just like not into cars. So that feels like a really daunting task for me. Whereas like if I just ask for help, there's someone who's super into cars and is going to be like, oh yeah, I'll just take that right down and get that fixed and then feel a great sense of pride because that's something that they're into. Um, and it, when you pool your resources, you can find that person that's like, oh, I, I 100% can handle this and gladly and enjoy handling this. And, you know, I see that in my, you know, in marriage, like I love cooking, but if my husband has to make something, it's going to be a lot for him and it's not going to be pleasurable. And but for me, it's like, release it's creative it's fun like you know but when we do everything as individuals and we isolate in that way it it just is not optimal for anyone yeah it, it, it's wild um my wife taught me this I, I i was never good at this um i don't know what to blame it on maybe being an only child like <laughs> 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 I don't know. I, uh, you know, I, I fell into that stressful situation trying to be good at everything. Um, yeah. and, and my wife taught me how to expand, uh, call it consciousness or, or caring or thought beyond myself. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, even something so silly talking about making food where it's like, she'll make, help make me breakfast every day. And then the one day I do it, like I'll throw two pieces of salmon and a little bit of broccoli in a steamer for myself and then walk away. And she's like, Hey, hello. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, yeah. And I was like, Oh crap. And, and some of it's just habit and routine. Um, of, of that's how I've done it since God knows high school. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I've just done the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Um, but, but at the same time, the other part was expanding thought. Yeah. Um, and, and realizing in some areas of my life, I'm, I'm, okay at it <laughs> in other areas yeah. of my life apparently making breakfast i suck at it <laughs> yeah and i have the opposite problem which i think is really scary as a woman because i think you know a, a lot of us are already kind of wired to think beyond ourselves because i think that's how mothering works mm -hmm. but i do the opposite thing where i'm like i'm the middle child so i'm always like it's very hard for me to make something in one portion because i'm thinking i'm gonna make this thing and it's gonna be good so i'm gonna want someone else to have it or you know like oh. And so my husband, the thing he says to me more than anything is worry about yourself because I can't even pick like a place that I want to go vacation. Cause I'm thinking like, what's he also going to enjoy, which then makes it really confusing. Cause I'm not even putting my own desires first, you know, mm -hmm. and it just is a, a scary recipe. It is. can be. It, yeah. It, it's wild. Um, there's a great book by, I don't know the name, Adam Grant, maybe it's give versus take. 
Yeah. Um, and, he, and he talks about three types of personalities, givers, <coughs> traders, and, and takers. Um, and, and in the beginning, a taker will, will advance quickly because they just take shit and go. Um, traders will, will you know make progress because they're kind of like, oh, I'll give you this if you give me that, and we'll trade back and forth. And then givers start off really slow because they get usually take advantage of by takers. <laughs> yeah. They'll give. And if they're with a giver, they're like, oh, thanks. And they give back and it, it's kind of great. If they're with a trader, uh, it works out beautifully because every time they just give, the trader feels obligated to give back. And so yeah. they both build really quickly. Uh, but if they get matched with a taker by accident, they'll keep giving and giving and giving and giving. And the person will just keep taking and it'll drain the other person till they're literally yeah. depleted. Um, yeah. And the, the beautiful news, though, is, is, you know, eventually if a trader gets matched up with a taker, for some reason, I, I don't think this is good. It's just what happens. Um, they'll become vengeful of the person not giving back when they traded with them. And they'll make it their mission to level this person or whatever it is going on. The <laughs> traders will end up right in the middle. They will champion the givers and the givers land up in the very, very, very top little percentage of, of results in life. It's really wow. wild. And they have all the research to back it up in every industry. Um, but it, it messes with your head. Uh, yeah, totally. Be because of that thought. And, and, and like you said, what's ingrained in us? What are the elements that are just naturally there? And how do we learn behaviorally over time of people either loving on us for doing something or punishing us for doing something? And, and, and it's wild, especially as, as a mom. Um, obviously, I'm not a mom. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. Start there. <laughs> um, but from observation, I, I think you're right. There's there's some innate element, uh, mom code, genes, something, hormones. <laughs> like There's something yeah. there that is wired to pay attention of more than yourself at all times. Um, and, and that's such a challenging situation. I think I, I learned from a course that the concept of filling up first as fast as you can first thing in the morning and then for, as, a, as a man in the relationship or as a spouse, uh, regardless of gender, I guess, but, but as a spouse, um, because my, and this is just how I heard it, I'll say what it is. As a man in a relationship with a woman, because of if you have a giver, um, the number one goal as fast as humanly possible is the, as a man to fill up as fast as possible and to start pouring over into her as much as you can, as quickly as you can, because she will be giving everything she has all the time. And as you slept, she's somehow deplete, like it, her energy is still giving. <laughs> and you got to wake up and, and fill up your tank and run over and like start pouring over everything you got. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I think a lot of these programs, there's gender confusion and blurriness. I think this can be with man or man or woman or woman or whatever. Um, but, but that's just how the author was stating it. And it it, it, it's true. If you have someone who's a really big giver, who's always giving, um, and, and you can see that from the outside, you know, taking time to fill up and then go and do your best to refuel them, will, I believe makes the world a better place. Just because totally. if, if we can fuel more people like you who are constantly giving and sharing and loving, um, it, the world gets better quickly. Um, yeah. It's just, just a thought. Uh, I love it. Just, uh, next question. What's a moment that made you feel incredibly humble? So this is very sad, um, mm. but, and Jarek knows the story, but I, so this is my second child, but first opportunity to mother because mm. last year, like same timeline, I was um, also pregnant. And so I was, I went over the 40 week mark. I was 41 week, 41 and a half weeks pregnant. Um, and I, we lost our baby in labor and, you know, I'm super health conscious. I've been health conscious for many years, like had a super healthy pregnancy. Um, and you know, I, I think he, I've not since heard a lot of stories that are similar, but at the time you just sort of, and it's in my husband and I have had this conversation when you're pregnant, it really takes you out of the present moment because even, you know, the term like someone's expecting it it relies on the future. And so I think that life is this really huge mir miracle. And, um, we all just kind of assume like you're pregnant, you're going to get a baby and, you know, miscarriages happen, but they happen earlier. But for, for me to get to that point and to lose our baby in labor, I realized that one, we have a huge illusion of control 
And everyone says, you know, going through birth, it teaches you to be present and you give up control and that's when the baby comes or whatever. But for me, in my situation, like I knew that our baby was gone before I even had to push. So it was like the ultimate, ultimate surrender where I was basically like, okay, I have to do this. This is so not anything I ever imagined that I would have to do. And you just go, you just realize like, and you know, of course it was like so much healing, which is so not linear. And you know, so many days, months, weeks of being in like a, you know, a really challenging place, but ultimately realizing that like, we really, really need to humble ourselves around this opportunity to be here because like if it wasn't for the the medical world and a lot of intervention, there's a lot of people I know who wouldn't be here. Um, and you know, we don't have the control that we think we have, even if you wake up every day and you eat healthy and you jog and you just like so much can happen. Um, and I think that we take that for granted because we live pretty comfortably here. You know, like there's just so many comforts yeah. in, you know, modern life and you don't think like, Hey, this could happen. Or like I could lose my, you know, like I just, I never crossed my mind as something that could happen to me. Um, and it's not because I'm not, you know, I'm connect. I feel connected to a lot of other, there's people who I have known my whole life who I learned went through similar scenarios and they just, I just never knew. And I don't know if I never knew because they got to a place where they didn't talk about it as much or because there is no space to talk about it very much. Um, but it really humbled me a lot as a person and it really made me a lot more grateful. And I think in my second pregnancy, um, we just looked at everything in the moment. Like we didn't want to know the gender. We wanted to say today we're at 16 weeks tomorrow, you know, in four days. And we just really wanted to stay in that moment. And it was hard because everyone around you is asking you, what's the gender? Is it your first child? You know, and there's so many triggers and there's so much that takes you out of that moment. And in that moment, there's nothing more important in any scenario, whether pregnant or not, than just being in that moment. It's powerful. It's true. Um, and it, it's, I think just observing your expression and sharing of it, it, it it's healing and it, not, I mean, for you and, and for others, like you said, there's not a lot of space and there's so many thoughts and beliefs and fears and uncertainties that pop up in someone's head when something like you said, that it is a process we know to be one way happens differently. All of a sudden people start to doubt themselves or, or, or is my other like is my leg gonna work i don't know <laughs> yeah stuff happens and our heads start to go all over the place and they take their own little fairy tale adventures into the the fears and the faiths and the uncertainties and the unknowns and um it, 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 when it happens uh creating space and it comes back to to community turning family or turning friends in the family and having mm -hmm. people that can hold space and and hear you and see you and, and to say they could understand, it would be a very, very, very select few of people who, who could truly, I mean, it would be maybe a mom, like your mom. <laughs> like yeah. there, there's few people who can quote unquote understand, um, but, but there's many people, if they choose to give space and give heart and hold that space can help heal and, and can help, uh, um, you know, I mean, it's a silly word to put together, but appreciate the circumstance and, and be there and just see it and hold space for it and do their best to understand it. Um, it's, it's amazing, but that community, I'm, I'm guessing, and, and I'll ask, um, you know, what are some of the things that helped most with going through that process? Uh, was it friends or family or talking or, or just good old soul cleanse and cry? all of those things. Um, I think, you know, I've always been a champion for therapy. Like I was a psych major and I, you know, worked in non-academic advising student affairs. Like I was in myself a therapist in a lot of ways, but I never went to therapy. And I don't know if it's because in my previous work, like I kind of had to, because you had to have one-on-ones with your supervisor. And, and it was very much like therapy. You even sat on a couch, you know, and you sort of talked about what was going on. And, but to have, to be in a place like I just had to go to someone that was like completely objective and I never met before in like my lowest state and 
that was really helpful because I think that I realized a lot of things about myself. Like I think that there are people who know you and I think we're living in highly curated times and I'm an optimist. And so there's a lot of people who, and I, so I'm not a person who sits and thinks like, Hey, how can I put my best foot forward on social media? But I'm a person who thinks like, Hey, what could be my best thought about this day? And that's important to share because what you want is to have a snowball effect of like good things. But then I realize that there are a lot of people who I know on the surface in that way. And same with my husband. My husband is a public figure. And so like, there's a lot of people who believe that they know us, but they know like one aspect of us. And so what was really healing for me and the people who showed up the most were people who I think also had, um, like a loss that was very close. Like I have friends who have lost like a parent or a sibling or, people who have also unfortunately lost children. Um, but they realize like, Hey, there are times in life that are just ugly and I can just be with this and not even like, I can just be here with what feels heavy, but I will walk toward that. And I think that you meet very few people who like see someone in pain, you know, and it's like, in psych, we, we studied this, but like, it's like that bystander thing where you're like, you see someone having a seizure like this happened to me at UTC mall when we were kids, actually, like someone was having a seizure and everyone in the food court, like stood there staring at her. And I was like 13 and I'm like, why is nobody helping this lady? And I'm a kid, you know? So I'm like run toward the front. And then much later, you know, in psychology, like we're studying like, Oh yeah, everybody thinks someone else is going to help. So no one helps. And we're all sort of paralyzed. And I think that happened to my husband and I, like we're both people that have a lot of friends. We had like, 200 people at our baby shower for our first baby. And when that happened, there were not 200 people there, you know, like I, and I, and I don't think people mean it out of malice, but some people have never crossed that amount of pain and they don't know what to say or do. Some people are just, you know, like too, too busy for anything heavy or maybe have too much heaviness in their own life. But something that someone who's like an aunt said to me is she's like, I love all the parts of you. Like I'm here for all of it. Like she came to our house, like scrubbed our toilets, like cleaned our bathroom, organized our closets. Like she's like, I'm here for all of it. Like I'm not just here. She's like, I love like the happy thriving you, but I love you. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? Yes. And I think there's not really enough of that. And so like when we got married, I'm like, I don't want to have a wedding because I realized like everyone wants to come to a wedding and no one wants to come to a funeral. And, you know, you sort of realize, like, what are we doing as people that, like, are we, are we just sunshining everything? Are we, like, hiding from going deep? Are we just not going deep within ourselves so we don't have the space to go deep for someone else? And so all of those things, and then just forcing myself to, like, go outside. Like, we, this is really dumb, but we played Pokemon Go because it makes, you have to go outside to play the game. And so like we were, there were days we wouldn't leave the house and it was just heavy. And so we would, and then we would go outside and like not necessarily have to talk about our feelings. Like we're like, we're in a park trying to catch this little cute thing. And like, you know, just think little baby steps to like reintegrate with the world. But yeah, I think the people who are not afraid of the heavy stuff and who are willing to like lift the rubble off of you, like that got me through life. And then just being willing to go there myself. Like I cried every therapy session. I went every week in the beginning, then twice a month, then every month and like just went there. Mm. It it's that's amazing. I love that the people who are strong enough or deep enough or have had enough pain themselves to be able to go to that space. Um, so many episodes ago, we interviewed a, a gentleman who grew up and in his words, his trauma and his pain prepared him to be the beast of a loving man he is today. Yeah. And it's like, whoo, that there, there's something so powerful to that, that concept of, a lot of times the pain we go through, no one wants to go through it. And, and oftentimes it, it straight up sucks when you're in it. Yeah. Um, but the other side of it gives you the ability, not, not, you don't have to, but the ability to help heal another who's been towards or around or within that range of, of pain, you can help heal them because you've been there. Um, yeah. and, and for someone like you said, 
out of those hundreds of people that are around, many of them have never touched that depth of pain or, or, or knowing of themselves. And therefore, they can, they can say nice words. They can care. They can hold space. Uh, they can send you all their love and, and, and do their best. Um, but finding, finding those unique people who've, who've been through some shit in life yeah. to make it simple. Like they've, yeah. they've got something special. And I think it's, it's a healing power. It's the yeah. ability to look you in the eyes and say, hey, I've been here. It's okay. It sucks. Let's roll. Yeah. Like keep going. You'll be fine. Totally. And often those people don't lead with that pain either. That was like a huge thing for me and something that really like drove me to like go there is that, you know, there's people that we all know that like you feel, you know, their story and you feel their story before they've even said it. Like, and they carry like their timeline, you know, like, Oh, my husband left me or, you know, and you can feel that, like you feel that pain. Um, and I think I really was like, one day that had this conversation with my therapist. I'm like, I know that this is a part of my story, but I really don't want it to be my story. Like, I really don't want to be that person that before I arrive anywhere, everyone has to say like, Oh, don't bring up babies or, you know, she lost it. You know, it, it was just like something that really bothered me and motivated me at the same time. Like, I do not want to be my story. I really like things happen. Right. And we can't just be these people who say, Oh, when I was eight, my parents got divorced. And then when I was 16, this happened. Like, that's not because we all have a story and that's not a way to lead life. Hmm. I like that. Lead, realizing and noticing and accepting that it's a moment, but it's not the entire, not the entire story, not the entire picture. And, I think what you said is powerful just to point out to people in case they missed it. Uh, allowing, allowing yourself to realize I'm not my story. It's, 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 it's part of me, <laughs> yeah. but it's not all of me. Um, yeah. and, and that choice is for some people, one of the hardest choices they will make in their entire life it, it is allowing themselves to realize I am not my story. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I grew up at self-help seminars, so <laughs> I, <laughs> I got smashed with a heavy dose of this since I was very small. <laughs> yeah, you're um, very unique. Yeah, but I, I you know, I, it, you only see the world as you are, and, and I didn't know any different. So, um, you know, I, I, I didn't realize that the mass, mass, mass majority of the people in the world, like, we're never told you have a choice. We're never told yeah. it doesn't have to be all of who you are. Like you can choose to allow it to be a part of who you are instead of all of who you are. You can choose to rewrite the narrative. You can choose to, you know, I, I, I was really lucky. My mom told me that over and over and over and over again as a kid. Um, and, and so, you know, choice was always a thing in my head just because yeah. she made it apparent. And, and it wasn't because she grew up with it. Uh, I think it's because she grew up without it. And then she yeah. found it as, as an adult and was like, damn, <laughs> <laughs> that's useful <laughs> and a whole and, new world yeah like i don't you know um th there was another interview earlier where a, a, a young kid was raised watching his mom get beat up by his his father all these years till 17 years old and at one point he got tired of watching her so he stepped in front of the punches and used to get the tar kicked out of him and then at uh. 17 years old this this father of his got sent to prison for attempted murder on him and his mom oh and gosh. on that day his mom told him it was your adopted father. That's not your blood father. And all of a sudden he had the choice to realize. And he, he, he I mean, as sad and shitty and horrible and sucks as that ugh, experience was, he said it was like freedom because he, he's yeah. like, wow, I don't have to turn out to be that man. Yeah. How cool. <laughs> well, gift. and I think what you're saying, saying is really powerful. Like I have a stepson who's adopted too. And so I think a lot about, you know, genetics and like all these things and how it plays into our lives. But I think even if it had been his father, like that's the thing that you have, you know, I had this conversation with my cousin yesterday. Like we now know that like woman, a woman is pregnant. If she's pregnant with a daughter, for example, like she, that daughter already has all of her eggs. So we lived in our grandmothers. And so yeah. we're having this conversation about the way that both my cousin and I relate in relationships and like the challenges we've had and issues with trust and like our grandmother's experience and how that we've been living, you know, far apart from each other since we were little girls, but having these similar feelings and experiences because our grandmothers had this experience. And then our mother subsequently had this experience because of course that also and so like we're starting now to like really look at that. And then I think a lot of women, 
um, are saying, I want to break this pattern, you know, and it's really hard to do when it's in your bloodline, actually, like, it's really hard. But and so I, I think in some ways, like what he felt is very real, because you're like, I don't have that, you know, I don't have to have that. Um, but you can do it even when it's in your bloodline. And it's hard, but you can, you can make that choice. And I think a lot of people, for a lot of people, what they feel when they have the chance to parent and why it's so beautiful is they have a chance to curate a home that feels more supportive maybe than the home that, or they will replicate a home that they grew up in that they think was perfect, but it's a chance to really create an environment that you wish you had or that you really loved having. Um, but yeah, it's, it's powerful. It is powerful. Speaking of powerful moments, what's an awe-inspiring moment you've had over the years? Man, um, I don't know. That's hard. I feel like I have one every day. <laughs> um, <laughs> or what are some of the moments that would qualify as awe-inspiring for you? You know, I think that in general, um, anytime I see a person in their flow, that's really awe inspiring for me. Like I'm realizing that I'm really touched by like, so for you, if I saw like a seminar that you were leading and I'm like, this is what, this is my friend that I love. And this is what my friend that I love, loves doing and is really good at. And when I can see people in their zone, like really lost in that moment, like really doing what they're doing, that's always like the most awe inspiring for me because we all have something that does that or several things that do that, but we all have to find what that is. And so like my best friend in college, we were both psychology majors together, but he like midway through and didn't end up doing it was like, I want to change my major to English because I really want to be a poet. And like, he's an immigrant too. So his parents are like, yeah, right. You cannot be a poet. They're like, you got to be a doctor or, you know, whatever. And so he didn't end up changing it because also we were too far along and he couldn't, but he ended up pursuing it on the side and like he won this poetry award and I went to go see him give, you know, recite the poem and I'm like sobbing and I'm like, why am I crying? And I realized at that age, like, this is something that I really love. Like I really love to watch. And I think that's why people also love children, like, cause they have a lot more truly like in the present moment, like loving this experience kind of moments. And I think we have as adults. Um, so it always reminds me, like, I love seeing people who are the best at what they do, like doing that thing, because I think it like, yeah, it leaves you in awe. It's like, a, you know, it's a performance that they don't even know they're performing sometimes. Like they're just in it. They have no concept of what they're, they just do it. It's like from their heart and it leaves you like, yeah, with your mouth open. I, I think for children too, they lack the they, they lack the experience of being taught how to be appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> if they don't like something, they will stand on stage at the recital and have a frowny face on with their arms folded and just shaking their oh, head totally. no. <laughs> totally. And they're like this ain't it. <laughs> but if this they love it, like they're on board and they're you know yeah. they're smiling and dancing and doing whatever. <laughs> Totally. As adults, we go do shit every day that we hate, but we stand there with a smile on our face, nodding. When it's like, stop that shit. If you hate it, just tell people you hate it. Like, I know, and it sucks because it spills over into our personal lives. Like, how many times we pretend we like are okay with a situation or a person or something that just doesn't feel good. Yeah, I've I've learned, and this is gonna sound silly because we're young, but I've learned as I've gotten older. Uh, I don't know if I'm old enough to use that quote yet, but I'm gonna <laughs> throw it out there. Um, Do you have grays yet? That's I, like the I have qualifier. tons of them. And okay, me too. Somehow I think I'm you're old enough. Most of my family. Oh, no, I have a grandfather who's all gray, and he has been since his like 50s. So I've, I've, there you go. I, I, might be, I might be picking up some of his genealogy along the way. <laughs> yeah, <here>. totally. I have <laughs> so cool. much gray. Which is cool. I'll keep it. My dad keeps telling me, he's like, you could dye it, you know? I'm like, why would I do that? It's me. Leave it alone. Yeah. Um, you no, know, I, I like it. I had headshots done, and the, the guy's like, well, It'll give me about five days and I'll like smooth out your wrinkles. I'm like, what the fuck? Those are my wrinkles. Leave them alone. I earned all of those yeah. by smiling too hard. That's my shit. Don't touch it. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, I like you. I think he liked me because it took less time for him to get his pictures. For too. sure. <laughs> Did he give you a discount for no. keeping it real? Oh, man. <laughs> he's like, here you go. You're done. Great. Um, <laughs> he's like, I could appreciate that. I'm like, I'm sure it saved you five hours, buddy. Uh, yeah. But, but, but 
I, I've, you know, an experience I've learned to just say it. Um, yeah. you know, I, I, someone was trying to connect me with this guy who's like, Oh, he's this great human who's doing all this stuff. And, and, and he's helping grow our businesses and you should really connect with them because he could help you too. So like, I'm like, sure. I'll take the call. Let's talk to him. So I'm talking to this guy. I'm like, you know, I should Google this human, like just gut feeling. So I just Google them and it's like scam warding, pickup artist, oh bullshit, blah, 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 blah. I was like, and so halfway as he's telling me he's here to change the world and better people's lives and wants me on his show and all this other stuff. I'm like, yeah, he sounds good on the outside, but I, I just like, Hey, have you Googled yourself? Like you're, you're supposedly this amazing marketer. Have you Googled yourself? And he was like, uh, well, you see the reason that happens. I'm like, no, 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 just stop. I don't need to hear the story. Have you done it? Like, please pull up the page. And he's like, okay. And I was like, let's just talk through this real quick. We all have shit we've done in life. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> like, yeah. And and it felt for like 40, I could feel my friend who introduced us. He was also on the line. I think he like fell over. <laughs> Cause he's yeah, like, no, oh, it's Jerex like really, really nice hard guy. to do. And I was like, I'm super nice, but like, I need to know what's real. Otherwise it doesn't make a whole shit ton of sense to just polish a turd and act like everything's cool. Of um, course. <sighs> But, but I've learned doing that, one, saves so much time. Two, saves so many headaches in the future. Three, yeah. feels really good on the other side. Yeah. And, and it's not just like, you know, being a crusader to call people out. Like that, that's not what it is at all. It's just finding the truth in the moment and saying, hey, what's real? Yeah. And, and you know, it's powerful. I, I love that. And I, I think the ability to do that with ourselves, to, to, speak our truth and, and say what's real. If you love it, say you love it. If you hate it, just say you hate it. Um, and that's okay. Someone told me, I, w I went to this training uh, through a course called Oneness University. And one of my favorite pieces, like memories and thoughts I pulled out of it was all emotions felt fully lead back to joy. Oh, wow. And it's like anger felt fully eventually leads back to joy. Hurt felt fully it leads back to joy pain felt fully leads back to joy and you just stare at these little monks from india and you're like seriously <laughs> like, you're like i don't, know about, that. I don't know about this game <laughs> like, but they're like no seriously like our body has a circuit breaker in it and they said you know weak anger felt fully is crap but that's not really feeling it fully like anger anger like the deepest ugliest like oh anger your body will short circuit after like five minutes of true, true, deep anger and take oh, you yeah. right back to joy. And they that said, try sense. it, but you got to do it fully. Um, I, I also, I had a, a, an amazing grandmother. She passed away in her early 62. So long while ago, it was my dad's mom. And I remember I called her one time and I, I, I she picked up, it was like ring, 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 ring. She picked up the phone and this is all I heard. <gasps> I'll call you back. Click. And I'm like, oh, fuck, someone died. Some, like, I don't know, it was an accident. So, like, my brain just went bananas. It yeah. thought up all the worst crap I could think of in 10 seconds. Um, then she called back, and ring, ring, I was like, oh, hey, Grandma, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, honey, how are you? I'm staring at the phone. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, like, oh, are you okay? Yeah, either Grandma has multiple personalities or, or like, there's something going on. <laughs> and I'm just staring at it. And, and I said, what was that? And she goes, what? And I was like, you were crying a few minutes ago. She's like, oh, it's, it's just a thing. And I was like, what do you mean a thing? Like, you okay? Tell me what's real. And she says, you know, I have this thing that when emotions build up inside of me, I go into my room, I turn on my egg timer, little, you know, kitchen timer for five minutes. <laughs> and I dive as deep as I can into the emotion. Wow. You know, I was 14 at the time, so I didn't realize that grandma was a genius. I, I thought she was just a little different. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, your egg timer's in the room. Yeah, but yeah, it's cool. It's totally different. But fast forward, you know, it took this trip to go to one of course to meet these monks who studied their whole life to find oneness and appreciation of, of life and humanity, all this stuff, for them to be like all emotions lead back to joy and me to look back and go, holy crap, grandma was a genius. Like she yes, tapped yeah, into this yeah. shit a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. And that was her way of kind of cleansing her soul and spirit was diving deep into those emotions and allowing it to bring her back to her best self. Yeah, um, that's incredible. Which is almost the opposite of what we do when we feel shit like that. We're like, ah. And, Let me push it away so I can keep functioning. Yeah. 
versus being like, okay, give me a damn egg timer. I'll be right back. <laughs> give me the egg timer. Well, you know what? She may have like, I don't know, you know, and we can't ask her at this point, but it may be something that she like perfected in being a mom because you don't have a lot of time to yourself. And so the time that you do have, like you better make it worthwhile, you know, like I've now been like, oh, wow, like peeing by myself is such a luxury. And like, if, if you think about minutes as like something that you can accomplish a lot and so like having an egg timer and having five minutes might have been something that she had to do so that she could then go out and continue to like cause she can't be doing that in front of you know like if she'd been doing that for hours in front of your dad like that would impact him yeah they definitely had their own chaotic relationship <laughs> yeah but that was one of the most beautiful things i ever learned from her over time was like wow diving deep in those emotions and, and not allowing any emotion to feel wrong or, yeah. or off or bad or, or anything. They're just being like, Hey, I don't judge the emotion. I just feel it. And I feel it all the way through. Um, yeah. and, and you know, those little monk guys I met who are super fun. I, I learned that they really like top gun movies and they're aggressive <laughs> when you play sport, <laughs> it's, but they're yeah. peaceful as all could be during the day. <laughs> That's where they get out their their emotions. Yeah. yeah. I got bulldozed over by one of them. We were playing this weird pool game where you like instead of hitting it with a, a pool stick, you throw your, you throw the balls back and forth with your hands. And so we and you have to run around the table while you're doing it. And one of these guys I, they jo- let me join the game and halfway through the game he literally like checked me into a wall as he ran by to grab the ball and throw it i was like these guys are freaking aggressive <laughs> wow it was a lot of fun though like they were laughing the whole time and having so much fun and silliness but i'm like dude they bring everything to what they do <laughs> i know i was so not prepared for that in sports when i was young i was like oh i think these are not for me because i didn't realize that you could just like do that on the court and then like i couldn't separate i'm like this girl was so mean to me <laughs> but some people do it well that's true um next question what's your greatest fear um you know i don't even know that i have them anymore i think what I went through, like, was very, you know what, actually, I'll take that back. Uh, I think losing my parents, because Mm -hmm. I, I realized that day, like, I was, I, I, you know, I'm like, in, in labor, and I'm like, you know, it would be really great if I just disappeared. Like, I went to this place in my head where I was like, I could just disappear. But then I thought, but then my mom is going to feel what I'm feeling right now. And this Mm. is horrible. And so I think for most of my life, I've thought, like, I don't want to hurt my parents. I don't want to hurt my parents. But then they're getting older. And I realize, like, I also don't want them to hurt me. Like, they, you know, like, you see that they're human. Like, there was one day that my dad fell when we were, like, walking to dinner. And, like, his glasses fell off his face. And my dad's, like, a cool, like stylish super intelligent guy and I'm like oh my god you're human like you fell you know and like Mm. and I and I think anytime something happens to them now I kind of feel like you know that fear creep up and like I don't delete voicemails from my mom because she's really funny and she has like this really great voice and like I think oh my gosh what if I can't hear it again you know what if something happens and And I'm realizing that that's like a legit fear. And also like they're now 60 or my mom's about to turn 60. My dad's 60, like something that we all kind of deal with. And so it's important to like go there and, you know, kind of for lack of a better way to phrase it, get ready because things, things do happen, but it is definitely a fear of mine. And it's been that way since I was a kid, like I'd walk to school and then run back. And then, cause we live really close to my elementary school and then walk back, you know, like, I have to say bye or I didn't do this. And it's just a fear. Mm. I'm with you. It's it's a weird stage of life when you start saving voicemails just because you think it might be the last one. Yeah. Oh, Um, but it's, it's, it's valid. Um, I I definitely have it right now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I haven't always had it, but you know, life happens and you start saving little things just because they're, they're so special. Totally. And something that really scares me is like I have a close friend who lost his mom and he's like, yeah, no one like loves you like your mom. Like no one cares about your ideas. No one would ever like your mother. And that's not true for everyone. But you kind of realize you're like, yeah, my mom like picks up the phone every time I call, you know, like no one does that. <laughs> it's true. I, it, she, she doesn't feel it and hit the message back later. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's beautiful for, you know, when 
we have that experience. It's, it's very beautiful. Speaking of, of beauty and possibly the future, what are you most excited about for your future? I, I realize you're very solid in staying present and now, um, but what if, if anything, what are you most excited about that might be out there waiting for you? Um, I think just, re, you know, recalibrating. I think, you know, I, I worked my first pregnancy till I was like very late in my pregnancy. And then um, I had been with the same company for a long time and didn't go back to them because it just was not the most supportive environment when I was pregnant or after everything. And so I sort of just like left, you know, I was always thinking like, how am I ever going to get out of this? Because I, I was so involved in, in like its growth and so much in really close with the founder and that kind of like life got me out of it. And then now I'm really into being a mom and I think it's really important to be really present for the early part of their life. And so I'm, have, the luxury, um, and challenge. Cause it's also the hardest job I've ever had of not working outside of the home, mm-hmm. but I'm excited for, you know, what it will be like in the future where I can integrate like the things that I know and, um, the work that I've done into something that is more big picture. Um, because, you know, first it was like emotional well-being and higher education and then it was like physical and really like what you eat and lifestyle but all of them felt fragmented in different ways and so I would like to do something that is more um, holistic and also I think you know we kind of had this conversation yesterday via Facebook but something that's more supportive of mothers because I think that's like the start of everything for everyone and I recently had a conversation with someone about like children being resilient and resilient really used to be one of my favorite words. Like it sounded like Brazilian and it like meant strength and all this stuff. And I'm realizing like that it's like this currency, it's like debt, you know, like I think that we think we're resilient, but everything has a reaction. And so like people will often say children are resilient and they are, but like the hurt that they experience as children, like will some where it'll live in their body, you know, as an ailment, or it'll get taken out on their romantic partners or on their friends or, you know, so I've been really like looking at that. And, and I think even mothers and the pain that they feel when they're pregnant, um, or the lack of support that they feel when they're new moms, like all of those things happen and they all go somewhere and they all cause a reaction somewhere. And I think that we're, so busy and we undervalue like women in the home because we've become so like success and career driven. Um, but I think that our families are falling apart for that reason. I agree. I agree. Um, I, I think there, there is a a moment I I learned this, um, from, from a, a, a woman who was teaching about relationships and she said, we're in a weird time in history right now where, because there's been some really, I don't even know the right word to use, but really thoughtless humans in the past who misabused power, um, and specifically men in relationships, um, and, and the way society has reshaped relationships, um, the, the, the concept has become, you know, tr- women teaching women to become, to, to go claim that power. And, and it, it so far in society, it, it's been projected that power is jobs and money and and all this stuff and and so there's been a huge push i I remember even when i was a i was a junior in college and my little cousin was a freshman and i was in her dorm room she had all her girlfriends there they were hanging out and i said hey ladies can you just answer this question like first thing that comes to your mind just don't even blink and and i just said never depend on a and all of them yelled man yeah. I was like, whoa, whoa. Like, do y'all have training camp? <laughs> like, where does that come up from? And Totally. Oh. And, I, and I asked another question, and this one broke my heart, which was, what if someone in this room, you're all same age, freshman in college, what if someone in this room, their main goal was to... Hold, do you... I hear your little one. Um, yeah, he just woke up from a nap. It's okay. No problem. Are you good? Does he? he he's welcome to join us. Um, <laughs> he's joining us. <laughs> perfect. Uh, I'll I'll do my best to wrap this up. I love this discussion, um, <laughs> but I, I want to respect you as a mom and make sure you, you you're there to take care of him. Totally. Um, 
So I'll wrap up this story real quick. So I asked No, them, no, I like it. You know, was there a training camp where we all were taught this thing? Like, where did it happen? And they were like, no, no, I think I just picked it up or my mom taught me or someone, I heard someone say Beyonce. It. Beyonce. <laughs> but but um, it, it came up and, and I was like, interesting. And I said, you know, what if there's a, a young woman in this room who dis, who's already decided she wants to spend four years, be top of her class, magna cum laude, best student ever, and she wants to graduate. And her main goal is to learn and prepare herself as a highly educated woman to become the world's best mom, to, to get yeah. married, to have children, and to raise these little beings to be the best future generation of, that, that humanity has ever seen. I said, what would you say to her if she was in the room? And I just picked girls and said, what would you say? And they'd say, you know, if all you want is your MRS degree, you should quit now and make room for someone who's actually going to use it. If all you're oh here is gosh. for that, leave. And I was like, oh, like... <laughs> My heart felt like it got kicked in. Yeah. It, I, I think it's just my own opinion, but motherhood is, is the greatest, most powerful position in the world. And, and to call it a position is the wrong thing, but, but if you compare it to the job world, there's no job on earth that compares. Like you're yeah. shaping humanity. You're, you're yeah. building the future of humans and, and deciding how they're going to think and feel and be. And, and, and you're loving on them and caring for them and... and, and being that person who always picks up their call and cares for them over all these years um, and you're shaping society as a whole but I, I think for some reason and it, it's due to really unconscious and stupid decisions made by people you know misabusing their power over the years I get it uh, but mm -hmm. at the same time I, I think people losing connection to how important it is is, is heartbreaking and, and yeah. I do all I can when I you know I, my friends all of you who have had children uh, you, uh, I might be a little overboard, but I do my best to acknowledge moms and praise moms and appreciate moms and protect moms and support y'all any way I can. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think it's the most powerful thing in the world. And I, there's I, definitely like no overboard too. Cause it's like what you're saying about the husband who should fill it. Like if a mom's cup is overfilled, like it just goes into a child, you know? Yeah. It, 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 I think I've scared a few friends from high school, though, because I've written them really nice notes. And they're like, okay, Jerry, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm like, no, yes. seriously, I really think moms are the greatest humans on earth. <laughs> like, yeah, when they may, you know, maybe they haven't felt, you know, maybe they have an ample support. Like, maybe they didn't need that love. But I can definitely tell you, like, I go to a mom's group. There's a lot of people who need that love. So better to give them too much than to, for someone to be walking around needing it and not getting it. I, I don't I don't think I have a choice. It's just what comes out when I see moms. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There, there's no turning it off. My spigot is turned on and broken. So That's amazing. Um is what it is. Okay. Final section here. Um and and want to respect you being a mom and take care of your little little guy there. Um we call this section nuts and bolts. It, it's just practical, tangible tips or things or experiences people could use from here. Uh real simple. Where do you focus okay. the majority of your thoughts and time and life each day right now? That's the first question. Momming. <laughs> <laughs> Being a wonderful mom. Um, and and this, this is a fun question. What would you say, in your opinion, in your experience, what's one of the keys to your success in that? Um, always like trying to focus on the good, you know? Like I think that, you know, we're talking about people and how you say everybody is um a warning or what was it they're either a warning or an, uh, an example a warning and an example yeah okay yeah so but when you used to see, see it separate oh, and yes. then warning, you felt like you brought example. judgment yeah so i do something similar which is like i try really hard to notice something that might be like scary or off-putting about someone but then like put it in the back of my mind and focus on what i really like about them mm. um and i think that that helps realize that like yeah we all have a you know we all have our unique gifts and something that we bring and it helps also just to be more grateful because there's people like I don't agree with politically and like all these other things um, and if I focus on that there's just always going to be this divide but it allows me to like interact with the world from a space of like curiosity and love and excitement about other people because I'm trying to find that thing that I really like in them hmm. I love that Focus on the good. Find find where they're that example or find where the goodness lies inside of them and it allows you to connect. 
it, it, totally it's beautiful it works it's helpful yeah. <laughs> it also Very. relieves stress and nerves and self-judgment and all that stuff so, uh. you know it's something we've shared with, with clients who have big presentations and they're so nervous and i'm like dude just focus on one fill yourself up with love before you walk in the room and two when you walk in just imagine yourself sharing that like just pour it out of your mind watch it like float the room and and fall into their their hearts and if you just do that during the presentation it, it, just watch what happens and he called me back he's like oh my god i wasn't nervous at all it, it feels Aww. so good when you're giving like psh, you're not you're not worried you're just giving something that, that feels good and, and yeah the presentation went great too <laughs> i was laughing like yeah yeah totally <laughs> um, but that, that ability to focus on the good in them that's powerful and, yeah. and the final question what would you say is one actionable tip that can help others experience this kind of success or experience in their life? Mm, I think like focus on your breathing, you know, like I often am exhausted now. And so I try really hard to like think about like oxygen <laughs> as energy and then it is, you know, like that's why it's so important and so much that you do, but if you wake up first thing and you're like really focused on like really filling your body with breath and like really expelling anything heavy on the exhale and like just really using your breath as your friend and not just an exercise and not just in yoga and not just, but like any moment and like any time, anything as hard as like just stop. And when you stop and breathe and you know, and I think this is also true in labor. Like I got through the worst labor and you know, subsequent labor like just your breath your breath is everything like that's what gives us life like do that focus on that use it every day that's like something you control and don't control like it's involuntary and it's voluntary and you have to connect with it i love that i, I love that um it, it's one of the most it's i think it's the only part of your autonomic nervous system that you can consciously control because it's automatic oh, wow. yet it's the only part you can um and I've, I've, you know, through studying performance and, and all these things, I've ran across all these people. And there's one crazy guy. He's such a love bug. Um, but, but he comes across as crazy. He has like 16 Guinness Book World Records for using his breath to uh, kind of modulate his, his, his body temperature. And so he can keep himself warm through using his breath. Oh, so my so. friend. Wait, is it, wait, who is it? Wim Hof. Yeah, my friend did his thing. Like yep. they like climbed in snow in bathing suits, yep. like full on. Yeah, that guy's amazing. And and so what? Where it came from though? I I had a chance to have dinner with him, and I was talking to him. And what's wild? The reason he got he was always ready, like a Guinness Book World Record chaser kind of guy, like super adventurous, super crazy and outdoorsy. Um, but his wife had depression and took her own life. Oh my gosh. And it just broke him as a man. And he had these beautiful little babies that he had to take care of as a, as a single father now. And he didn't know how to, how to cope. And, and he went into the forest and, and spent time in nature learning just the, the ways of, of nature and the natural elements of life. And, and he learned how to be very, very comfortable and present and, and learned how to, how to gain you know, his own power and, 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 and freedom from nature. And, and part of it was learning how to breathe and be. And, and so he's used his breath. Um, it's scientifically tracked now, and there's papers written on it where, hold on one second. <coughs> Holy moly. Um, <laughs> excuse you. me. <laughs> was that, it was a sneeze, right? It was yeah. a sneeze. <laughs> it came out of nowhere. Sneeze. Um, and, and so it's scientifically proven and tracked now that he's used his breath to take control of other parts of his autonomic nervous system from speeding his heart up or slowing it down uh, to controlling his body temperature. Things that previously, you know, people say it's out of your control. It's just part of your body. Or we try to control with medicines or we try to control with pills and, or, or stimulants or stuff like that. And, yeah. and this guy's been able to, to scientifically show there's ways to practice that you can start to tap in to to the you know i don't know if you want to call it a joystick or a dashboard or whatever the the, the ability to control the different elements that are normally just auto, autonomic and automatic in our system it's powerful yeah um, i'm definitely like not even on his level and i can say that even as just like you know a lay person who tries to do it consciously like there's there's a lot that you can change like 
it's it's a like I have to bounce my baby to sleep on a yoga ball like he's like super hyper alert so I'm like okay I had to do this and sometimes it's like for like 20 minutes which is hard and I'm like if I focus on my breath like it's not you know like it is and it isn't um but uh, some people have no connection to that and it's scary when you don't because then your heart starts racing or you're afraid and like you can't get it under control and it just becomes a lot yep my friend Preston they just had their first little one and I know Preston yeah well you probably saw his post where he talks about you become a bodybuilder when you have a child (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I didn't see. I can't. I like only see Instagram with no sounds these days because it's always like when he's sleeping or like I'm nursing or, you know, so I can't. I, he has so much stuff that I have to listen to. But yeah, I agree. They're, they're great people. Preston and Lexi are good friends. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I met his wife once, but it's funny when they first started dating. He's like, I'm dating a girl who looks like you. And I saw her and I was like, she does kind of look like me. It's true. <laughs> It's crazy. So that yeah, I always look at their baby because their baby was born just before ours. I'm like, is this what my baby's gonna look like? They have some similarities, but Aww. yeah, he's a great guy. Aww. He's a good human. Yeah. I love that. The power of breath. Take a breath, breathe into it, breathe through it. Um, there's so much power there. Well, yeah. I want to be respectful and thankful thank and you. grateful for you spending all this time with us. Yeah, thank you so much. I changed a diaper and nursed while doing that. <laughs> the power it's of being all possible. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my best to just stay focused. <laughs> it, totally. Yeah, um, I think we can multitask better, but it's probably an evolutionary thing. I, I think so. It's how you keep the whole family alive without anything yeah. falling apart in any direction. Totally. So thank you again thank so you much so for much. sharing life with us here. I'm really glad you're doing it. It's such a great topic. Me too. And I, I believe people will really enjoy this. Um, thank for, for everyone who decided to tune in and listen, thanks for spending a little bit of life and love with us here. And, and I really look forward to seeing you all next episode.